Hello my little learners. In today's video, we are going to boost our learning by discussing the questions and answers of chapter 4, Exploring Magnets from your class 6 curiosity textbook. But wait, before we jump into the question and answer, let's quickly understand something super cool. The different shapes of magnets. Did you know the magnet says, humans have made me in different shapes and sizes based on their needs. But my poles always come in pairs, no matter what shape I take. There are many shapes of magnets and each one is used for different purposes. The most common ones are bar magnet, disc magnet, cylindrical ring and spherical magnets. Look at this picture. You can see how the position of the poles changes based on their shape. Some magnets have poles on the ends others on flat faces or even on the inside and outside. But remember this golden rule, poles always exist in pairs. A magnet will always have both a north pole and a south pole. You can't have just a north pole or just a south pole. They always come together like best buddies. Now, let's quickly recall some key points from the chapter before we start solving the questions. Ready? Let's go. A magnet has two poles, the north pole and the south pole. The poles of a magnet always exist in pairs. A single north pole or a single south pole cannot exist. Magnetic materials are the materials that are attracted towards a magnet. And non-magnetic materials are the materials that are not attracted towards a magnet. A freely suspended magnet rests along the north-south direction. The needle of a magnetic compass indicates the north-south direction. When two magnets are brought close to each other, like poles, that is north-north and south-south poles, repel each other, while unlike poles, North and South Poles attract each other. Okay, now that your mind is fresh and ready, let's dive into the question and answers of this chapter. First question is fill in the blanks. Unlike poles of two magnets dash each other, whereas like poles dash each other. So students, we know unlike poles of two magnets attract each other, whereas like poles repel each other. The materials that are attracted towards a magnet are called magnetic materials. The needle of a magnetic compass rests along the north-south direction. And a magnet always has dash poles. So we know a magnet always has two poles, north pole and south pole. So the answer will be two poles. Okay, next question is, State whether the following statements are true or false. A magnet can be broken into pieces to obtain a single pole. So no, it is a false statement. You always get two poles. Even the broken piece becomes a complete magnet with both north and south poles. So it is a false statement. Next is similar poles of a magnet repel each other. So yes, it is a true statement. Like poles repel and unlike poles attract. Third number is iron fillings mostly stick in the middle of a bar magnet when it is brought near them. So students it is a false statement. We know iron fillings mostly stick at the ends not the middle. Fourth is a freely suspended bar magnet always aligns with the north-south direction. So yes it is a true statement. This is a key property of magnets used in compasses. So the first and third statements are false and second and fourth are true statements. Question number three. Column one shows different positions in which one pole of a magnet is placed near that of the other. Column two indicates the resulting interaction between them for different situations. Fill in the blanks. So students, we know the rule, like poles repel and unlike poles attract. 
by using this rule we will fill the table north pole near north pole will cause repulsion north pole near south pole will cause attraction again south pole near north pole will cause attraction and south pole near south pole will cause repulsion question number 4 atharv performed an experiment in which he took a bar magnet and rolled it over a heap of steel euclips according to you which of the options given in table 4.3 is likely to be his observation so students we know that magnetic force is strongest at the poles that is a and c position and magnetic force is weakest in the middle that is b position so a third observed that the maximum number of steel u clips got attached to the two ends of the bar magnet the north pole position a and the south pole which is position c only a few clips stuck to the middle part position b this is because a magnet is strongest at its poles and weakest at the center so the correct observation is 1 position a 10 clips position b 2 clips and position c 10 clips question number 5 reshma bought three identical metal bars from the market out of these bars two were magnets and one was just a piece of iron how will she identify which two amongst the three could be magnets without using any other material so reshma can identify the two magnets by trying to make the bars attract or repel each other she should take one bar and bring it close to the other two one at a time if the bar shows attraction from both ends to another bar that second bar is likely just iron because iron gets attracted to magnets but does not repel however if she finds that one bar attracts at one end and repels at the other then both are magnets since only magnets can repel each other the bar that never causes repulsion is the piece of iron so students i will give you two types of answers a short one and a long one you can choose the answer depending on how many marks the question carries remember the concept stays the same in both answers what changes is the detail and the way we explain it based on marks this method will help you understand how to answer smartly in exams short answer reshma can find the magnets by checking for repulsion only magnets can repel each other so the two bars that show repulsion at like poles are the magnets the remaining one which only gets attracted but never repels is the piece of iron long answer reshma can identify the two magnets by checking for repulsion she should take one bar and bring it close to the other two one at a time if the bar shows attraction from both ends to another bar that second bar is likely just iron because iron gets attracted to magnets but does not repel however if she finds that one bar attracts at one end and repels at the other then both are magnets since only magnets can repel each other the bar that never causes repulsion is the piece of iron question number 6 you are given a magnet which does not have the poles marked how can you find its poles with the help of another magnet which has its poles marked so to find the poles of an unmarked magnet using another magnet with marked poles we can follow these steps take the marked magnet with known north and south poles bring the north pole of the marked magnet close to one end of the unmarked magnet observe the interaction if there is repulsion then the end of the unmarked magnet is also a north pole because like poles repel and if there is attraction then the end of the unmarked magnet is a south pole because unlike poles attract Question number 7 A bar magnet has no markings to indicate its poles how would you find out near which end its north pole is located without using another magnet 
so students we know that the north pole of a freely suspended magnet always points north direction so to find the north pole of an unmarked bar magnet without using another magnet we can use the property that a freely suspended magnet always aligns itself in the north south direction and the end that points towards the north is its north pole steps are Suspend the bar magnet freely using a thread tied at its center, allowing it to rotate. Let it come to rest without disturbance. The end of the magnet that points towards the geographic north direction is the north pole and the opposite end is the south pole. So students, this is a long type answer. To convert it into a short type answer, you can simply skip the detailed steps. Question number 8. If the earth is itself a magnet, can you guess the poles of earth's magnet by looking at the direction of the magnetic compass? Let's first understand something very basic. What do we mean by the poles of the earth? We know that the earth spins around an invisible line called its axis. Where this axis meets the earth's surface at the top and bottom, those points are called the poles. The point near the Arctic Ocean is called the North Pole and the one in Antarctica is the South Pole. Pretty simple, right? But what does this have to do with a compass? Well, here's something amazing you might already know that the Earth itself behaves like a giant magnet. So now imagine that there's a huge bar magnet inside the Earth. When we hold a compass, its magnetic needle always points in the north-south direction. But why does that happen? Because the north pole of the compass needle is attracted towards the earth's north pole. But wait, we have also learned that opposite poles attract. So if the needle's north pole is pointing towards the earth's north pole, that means the earth's north pole is actually behaving like a magnetic south pole, right? So, it's kind of reversed. Yes, if you imagine the bar magnet inside earth, the south pole of that magnet is actually near the geographic north pole. So, the geographic north pole is near the magnetic south pole and the compass needles north points there because north is attracted to south. So, the compass needles north is actually pointing to the earth's magnetic south which is near the geographic north. Confusing but cool, right? Answer. Now, we can write the answer as yes. If the earth is itself a magnet, we can guess its magnetic poles by observing the direction of a magnetic compass. The needle of a compass always points in the north-south direction with the north pole of the needle pointing towards the geographic north. This means that the geographic north pole of the earth is actually the magnetic south pole because opposite poles attract. Similarly, the geographic south pole is the magnetic north pole. Question number 9. While a mechanic was repairing a gadget using a screwdriver, the steel screws kept falling down. Suggest a way to solve the problem of the mechanic on the basis of what you have learned in this chapter. So, the mechanic can magnetize the tip of the screwdriver. This can be done by rubbing one end of a bar magnet along the screwdriver in one direction several times. Once the tip becomes magnetized, it will attract and hold the steel screws preventing them from falling. This works because magnetic materials like steel can be temporarily magnetized and then attract other magnetic objects. Students, steel is a magnetic material because it contains iron. Steel is an alloy of iron and carbon which can also be attracted to magnets and can even become temporarily magnetic. Question number 10. Two ring magnets X and Y are arranged as shown in figure 4.16. It is observed that the magnet X does not move down further. 
what could be the possible reason and suggest a way to bring the magnet X in contact with magnet Y without pushing either of the magnets. So the reason magnet X does not move down is because like poles of the two ring magnets are facing each other and like poles repel. This magnetic repulsion prevents magnet X from coming in contact with magnet Y. To bring magnet X in contact with magnet Y without pushing them, we can do the following. Take out one of the magnet, either X or Y, flip it upside down so that unlike poles face each other. Now place it back in position. Since unlike poles attract, magnet X will now be pulled down and will stick to magnet Y. Question number 11. Three magnets are arranged on a table in the form of the shape shown in figure 4.17. What is the polarity N or S at the ends 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 of the magnets? Polarity of one end 5 is given for you. To determine the polarity at ends 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6, we apply two key rules. Like poles repel and unlike poles attract. Every magnet has two poles, a north pole and a south pole. So it is given that end 5 is the north pole. Since 5 is attracting 4, end 4 must be south because unlike poles attract. Therefore, the opposite end of that magnet, end 3, will be north. 3 is attracting 2, so 2 must be south and the opposite end 1 will be north. Finally, end 6 is opposite to 5 which is north, so 6 must be south. So students, that's all for today. I hope you have understood all the answers and the concepts behind them clearly. Keep revising and stay curious. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.